Around 65 million years ago, the Earth turned faster, days were a half hour shorter, and the continents we know today were beginning to take shape. The dinosaurs had been almost wiped out, the age of mammals was dawning, and frogs the size of cats totally normal. They weren't the first frogs or anything. Frogs had been around for 180 million years. Over time, not much about their body changed, except their size. Enter Bealzy Bufo, the baddest, meanest, and biggest frog that ever existed. Scientists found their first bone sample in Madagascar. It took them 15 years to piece together the whole skeleton. Step by step, they put the frog skeleton together, just like an ancient jigsaw puzzle. When they saw what they had found, a huge creature with a weird shield, they gave it its epic name. It's a mix of Greek and Latin, and it means armored frog from the abyss. Woo! This guy didn't hop from one lily pad to another catching insects. Nah, that would be too tame. It liked to live in dry places and used a sit-and-wait hunting style. It blended in with its surroundings, waiting. Then, bam! It jumped out to grab its lunch. It had a huge head, an extremely wide mouth, I know what that's like, and powerful jaws with huge teeth. It spent its days snacking on lizards, mammals, smaller frogs, and maybe even baby dinosaurs. Even though it was the size of a beach ball, it still caught a lucky break. It lived in Madagascar, safe from the large and dangerous dinosaurs that ruled over other parts of the world. The armor on its back was almost like a turtle shell. It was scary and strong enough to protect itself from smaller dinosaurs and crocodiles. Another reason for that armor was that it helped the frog survive in the dry heat. It was able to dig down and hide underground, away from the burning hot sun. The biggest frogs in Madagascar these days are just regular-sized frogs. A perfect mid-morning snack for Bealzy Bufo. The largest frog on Earth these days is the Goliath frog from West Africa. It also grows to the size of a small cat, but it isn't related to this awesome prehistoric beast. Now, the most famous frog on the planet these days is none other than Kermit. But he's not very big and doesn't eat other frogs, so we'll move on. Scientists discovered that Bealzy Bufo actually does have some living relatives, just not in Africa. Its big mouth gave it its name. It's the Pac-Man frog from South America. Even the biggest Pac-Man frogs are still two to three times smaller than their famous ancestors. They have little horns on their heads, and they use the same sit-and-wait hunting tactics. Researchers use these frogs to figure out the bite force of their prehistoric relatives. They use two plates covered with leather. The frog bites down on the plates, which tells the researchers how strong their bite is. Long story short, Bealzy Bufo had a bite force of around 500 pounds. Not bad, but a Nile crocodile's bite is 10 times stronger. Um, probably safer to avoid either of those guys. So how did these Pac-Man frogs reach South America? Well, millions of years ago, South America, Antarctica, and Africa were actually all smooshed together in kind of a continental pie called Pangaea. Frogs could have hopped over via Antarctica, looking for food or a cozy place to live. And it used to be a much warmer place back then. This giant Madagascar frog was unique for sure, but it wasn't the only giant on Earth. If it had been alive earlier, it would have probably made friends with Megan Europsis. Not to be confused with Megan of Sussex. It's the largest known insect to have ever existed. It looked something like a dragonfly, a big one. Its wings stretched about the length from your shoulder to your fingertips. It was flying around way before flying dinosaurs had come along. Back then, there was way more oxygen around. That's why this dragonfly was able to grow so big. Another reason for its size? There was no one else flying around looking for a tasty dragonfly snack. It had time to develop dangerous teeth and figure out how to fly around like a pro. Megatherium americanum, the great beast from America, was the ancestor of today's sloths. These days, sloths get a bad rap for being super slow and kind of boring. But the sloths of the past walked on two legs and lived on the ground. This giant sloth was as tall as a giraffe when standing on its back legs, as heavy as a hippo, and looked kind of like a bear. It had huge claws 
but was most likely a vegetarian. Early humans probably saw it roaming around. It only went extinct about 10,000 years ago. Giant armadillos were cruising around back then, too. They used to be the size of a beetle, a Volkswagen beetle. Just like today's armadillos, they had a huge, tough shell made of bone and was super heavy. They looked pretty scary, but they were just harmless vegetarians. Regular prehistoric kangaroos had flat faces and forward-pointing eyes. They didn't hop around at all. They weighed as much as a horse and were so bulky they could only walk around on two legs. They used their one large toe to move quickly through woods and plains, looking for delicious leaves and shrubs. They might have even used their tail as a fifth limb. Other than that, they have a lot in common with modern kangaroos. But Diprotodon, the largest kangaroo-type thing ever discovered, was about the size of a rhino. It had strong, furry legs, just like a kangaroo. But this guy wasn't into jumping around all over the place. It spent most of the time munching on bushes and lounging by a lake or river. Sounds good to me. The biggest shark that ever existed was… hmm… oh yeah, Megalodon. Imagine a great white shark. Now shorten the nose, flatten the jaw, and stretch out those pointy teeth. This thing was enormous, as long as a bowling lane, and as heavy as a blue whale. Female Megalodons were most likely twice as large as male ones. Even though it's long gone, its food is still around. Giant sea turtles, seals, porpoises, smaller whales, mmm, delicious. The Megalodon probably had the most powerful bite of all time. And it was so big, it needed plenty of food every day. Scientists have found Megalodon fossils off the coast of every continent except Antarctica. Sharks don't have regular bones, except for their sharp teeth. It's one of the reasons why they're so fast and skillful in the water. Giant scorpions used to rule over lakes and rivers, and even swam in the ocean about 400 million years ago. They had claws the size of bowling pins. By comparing them to other scorpions, they calculated that this giant sea scorpion used to be about twice as big as a fridge, if you include its claws. It most likely grew so big for the same reason as these monster dragonflies. They were much higher levels of oxygen in the air back then. Ancient saltwater crocodiles were almost the size of a bus and as heavy as an elephant. They lived about 130 million years ago and were at the top of the food chain. So what did they eat? Pretty much anything that got a little too close. A few million years after the fall of the dinosaurs, a new gigantic beast took over. It was the Titanoboa, the largest snake the world had ever seen. It was as long as a telephone pole and as heavy as a giraffe. It behaved like a present-day anaconda, spending most of its time in the water munching on anything it could find. The largest lizard ever, the great-grandpa of the famous Komodo dragon, was called Megalania. It had super dangerous teeth equipped with some nasty venom. That makes it the largest venomous animal ever. Some of the largest birds of all time lived around 50 million years ago. Think of an albatross with a seriously dangerous mouth. Their wingspan was around the size of three NBA players. Now, it wasn't easy finding out about these huge birds and their lifestyles. Researchers took fossils all the way from Antarctica to California to compare them to bones of related species. Back then, Antarctica was much warmer than today. It was covered with ferns and was home to a bunch of animals – marsupials, frogs, ancient penguins, albatrosses, and even falcons.